It's time now for our global battle of the charts. You can see these charts on the Bloomberg by running GTV Go. And today we have our first celebrity guest battler, Omer Sharif, Societe Generale's senior US economist. And he has graciously joined us in studio today to present his chart. Therefore, he shall go first. Thanks, Fanny. Uh, well, obviously, all the attention this week is on the FOMC. But I want to get away from the sort of week-to-week -week noise on the FOMC and talk about a more fundamental debate that's happening. And that's whether or not the Fed should ditch their 2% inflation target. Now, one of the things a lot of officials have talked about is what's called price-level targeting. And all this means is that the Fed aims for 2% on average over a medium term. Now, there's pros and cons to this approach, but my chart sort of gives you a couple of the problems with it. The main issue, as I see, is in the top panel. Now, this is the core PC deflator versus 2% for the last 20 years. You can see all the bars to the downside, basically meaning the Fed has been missing for the last two decades. Now, price level targeting doesn't allow you to miss. You've got to make up for this. So what does that mean for the inflation rate? Well, that's in the bottom panel here. Today, that means the inflation rate in 2018, to make up for all the misses the last two decades, the Fed would have to aim for core PC running at almost 7.5%. Now, if you think about this uh, and you pull it forward and say, let's say inflation is going to be 2.5% going forward. Well, we wouldn't get to the same price level until 2030. Now, Whatever you think, that's going to give the whole idea of lower for longer a much, much different meaning. You can see my chart on Bloomberg TV at GTV Go. Well, I honestly, bravo. That was, that was really Hey, wait wonderful. a sec. I haven't had my go yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can't, I you can't forgot. clap yet. This is a battle that is meant to be happening here. Yeah, well, you know, our other celebrity today is Guy Johnson. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I think actually it's interesting. I was chart in, in some ways relates a little bit to mine. So what we've got here uh, is the... Uh, is, on the, the white line, which is the US 10-year, moving higher, as you can see, incrementally higher. Now, normally, base metals have been tracking what has been happening with the yields. And that kind of seems logical, doesn't it? Basically, the same conditions that you would have thought would drive yields higher, theoretically, an indication that the market is doing well or the economy is doing well, and as a result of which metals should necessarily follow as a result. Now, that has broken down of late, and you can see that as the white line and the blue line have diverged over there. Now, the question is, as we start to see yields moving up through 3% and potentially a little bit higher, the Fed's coming up, as we've just been hearing, are we going to see metals catching up? So this could be an opportunity to make, uh, make, make a little bit of money here, potentially. Uh, you've also got the China factor in all of this. The only caveat I will add is, are yields moving higher because there's an expectation that the U.S. economy is doing well? Or are yields moving higher because the market's worried about the twin deficit, the trade story, which could be inflationary as well? So you've got to make up your mind about the fundamentals behind all of this. But if you think that the U.S. 10-year is moving higher because the U.S. economy is doing well, then metals could be a good bet, Vonnie. I like it, Guy. There is a trade in there. There's a way to make money. You're tempting me, I have to say. But I won't be swayed because we are very grateful to Homer for coming in and being our first celebrity battler for Battle of the Charts. And I think Guy would agree with me as his first Absolutely. day in New York as well. That he has it to come is back. Omer and he should be the winner.